getting. You can't always. This is the death. Remarkably him. Turn back. Towards God. Rise up. Now the number of those who ate was 5,000 men, besides women and children. And Jesus promptly compelled his disciples to climb into the boat and to precede him in crossing the sea, while he dismissed the crowds. And having dismissed the multitude, he ascended alone onto a mountain to pray. And when evening arrived, he was alone there. So what I want to share with you now is being alone, being alone with God, aloneness. I know St. Teresa of Avila in some of her poetry and her writings about the contemplative life, about an intimate relationship with God, she speaks about being alone with the alone. And you know, a lot of us are afraid of being alone nowadays. Being alone is something that we find very difficult. And we see that Jesus was with 5,000 men besides women and children. So that's probably, could be easily 10,000 people there. So it's quite a crowd. And then it said, he dismissed the crowds and having dismissed the multitude, he went up to the mountain to pray to be alone. If you put all of that together, you could say that Jesus liked being with people. He liked talking with people, helping people, even huge numbers of people. And you know, nowadays a lot of people like to go to concerts and events where there's a lot of people because it's fun. But obviously, it doesn't do everything for us. So we need some time to be alone with God. And Jesus was very busy during his ministry, healing, preaching, and so on. I guess he was under a lot of pressure at times as well. And then he had the Pharisees who were trying to basically arrest him. And he had all sorts of of things going on, he was teaching his disciples, and so on. So we find occasionally throughout the story of Jesus where he goes off during the night or in the early hours of the morning and he's gone up to, usually up to the mountain somewhere, to a lonely place to be with his father. So what was he doing? Well, I guess he was getting away from it all, resting, relaxing, but maybe more importantly, he was spending time with his Father, uh, with God the Father. 
And Jesus, even though he was God, is God, at the same time he was a man, he was a human being, so he had that need to communicate with his Father. And not just to find out what to do next, but to spend time in the embrace of God. So, aloneness then is something to be desired. You know, when a man and woman love each other, when they're married, it's very, very important that they spend time together. And we hear a lot of problems nowadays about where maybe people don't get a chance to be together, husband and wife, they just, they're so busy, they don't get a chance to be together. And because of that then, the relationship breaks down and all that. So they really need to be alone, to spend some time alone together. And when it's said there that Jesus was alone, it, what it means is that he was alone with his Father. So the challenge for us then, the invitation to us, is to imitate what he did. And after we've enjoyed ourselves with the crowds, and with the entertainment and all of that, then to spend time with him. And it isn't just to pray or, you know, it isn't supposed to be a penance. Being alone with God is supposed to be a very, very enjoyable thing, a very, very uh, intimate thing. And that's where the secret of the relationship with God comes in. I think it was Pope Benedict who said that we should not be afraid to be intimate with Jesus Christ. And I guess for a lot of people, even people who practice prayer, that's a bit of a mystery and a bit of a secret because we start to experience the love of God at a very spiritual level, deep inside ourselves. And it's that love then, that intimate relationship that moves us forward, that improves us. I know St. John of the Cross, whom I like to quote all the time, he says that, we move forward in our spiritual life, we become better people according to the touches of God. What he means by that is that when God embraces us or when God loves us or kisses us in some way, in a mystical way, the effect that that has on our spirit and on our soul is that it makes us a happier, better, more spiritual person. And he moved through the fair And fondly I watched him Move here and move there And he made his way homeward While one star did shine and my heart it did follow this true love of mine. And so softly he came out, his feet made no din. And he laid his hand on me, and smiling did say, It will not be long, love, till all So we just ask God now to give us the grace and the understanding and the ability to find the time to be alone with him. Dear Jesus, you often went to a lonely place, to a quiet place, and you spent time there with your father. And that intimacy 
that exchange, that spiritual energizing helped you then to continue your mission on earth. Obtain for us, give us the grace to be like you in that, in that we're not afraid to be with you. We're not afraid to be alone with you. Open our hearts and our minds and our spirits so that we receive your loving embrace, so that we receive the intimate touches of the deepest parts of ourselves that help us to fall completely in love with you. Amen. It's a great joy for me to endorse Shalom World TV. I was delighted to hear that they were going to be based in Port Leisha, in our diocese, in a studio there in the parish, to base their Irish operation. I'm delighted to welcome the Shalom team. They will be invaluable partners for the Meeting of the World Meeting of Families when we host it in Dublin in 2018. And they'll be a marvelous tool to deepen the evangelization and the spreading of the good news around our country. The greatest challenge today for all of us in faith is communication. Communicating the message and doing it well. I thank Shalom for making their contribution to the world of media and their contribution to allowing the good news to be heard to the ends of the earth. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit bless all who work in Shalom and all who watch their stations. May St. Bridget accompany you on your journey. May St. Connet be with you and St. Lazarian stay beside you. Amen.